Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio, and in this video, we are doing patrol routes with ledge detection, obstacle detection, and we're making this script adaptive so that no matter where you put your enemy, they'll be able to find obstacles or ledges and detect them. This is all part of a new series where we'll be looking at enemy AI, trying to make it adaptive and complex while also making the tutorials beginner friendly. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is to actually get our enemy into the scene and get them moving. At this point, I'm just starting off with a simple sprite here. It's just a sprite renderer with, in this case, my CRT robot sprite. I've added a capsule collider, which as you can see, just encapsulates their body. Make sure you're using the 2D collider. And finally, I've also added a rigid body on here. And the only thing I've changed about the rigid body is that I've just frozen rotation on the Z so that he doesn't go spinning wildly when he falls over. All right, with that done, we're ready to get scripting. So let's head down to our assets folder where we can right click. We're just going to create a new C Sharp script and I'm gonna call this one Patrol State. Now before we can get anything else happen, we need to get this robot moving. So let's start off with a public rigid body 2D reference, which we'll just call RB. And we'll also make a public float, which is just going to be our speed. Now we could do this in update, however, updates called every frame, which is variable. So when we're working with physics, we generally want to do things in fixed update, which is called 50 times per second. And it's just a nice steady way to run anything to do with physics. And so in here, let's just take our rigid body dot velocity and let's set it equal to a new vector two. Keep in mind a vector two is just an X and Y value. And so for the X value, we're going to use speed. And for our Y value, we just want to stick with the rigid body's current Y velocity. So we just do rigid body dot velocity dot Y. Let's give that a try. All right, so I'm just gonna click on my robot, head over here to add component, where we can add the patrol state. I'm gonna make sure to drag my rigid buddy down here, and I'm just gonna leave speed at zero for the moment. So now we can just test out some speeds. Let's start them off at a speed of one. All right, that's working pretty good. Two speeds him up a little, and three, but obviously he goes flying off the cliff, which is not what we intend long term. All right, so at this point, what we need to do is actually make it so that he can detect when he reaches the edge of the cliff. So the method we're gonna use here is we're actually going to right click on our robot and go to create empty and let's just call this ledge detection. And now the idea here is what we're gonna do is move this just a little bit in front of our robot and we're gonna cast a ray downward that looks for something on our ground layer and if it detects nothing on the ground layer, it'll know that it's reached a ledge and it needs to turn around. Now for this to work, you're going to actually have to have a ground layer. So if I were to click on my environment and go to my ground, this is just my tile map for my ground here. I, you'll notice that I have called mine tile map. So the layer I'm using is called tile map. You can do whatever you want, but if you just click on whatever you're using to be your ground, go to layer and make sure that you've got a layer selected that will be just for the ground as this is what we'll detect. All right, so with that done, we're gonna need a couple of new variables. So first off, Let's make a public transform. And this is going to be our ledge detector. We'll also make a public layer mask. And this is going to be our ground layer. And finally, we're gonna make one more public float. And this one is actually going to be our ray cast distance. And so this is just gonna be how far down we wanna look for a ledge. All right, so at this point, we're actually going to bring back our update method. As we want to check for a ledge constantly and as often as possible, not just 50 times per second. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make a raycast hit 2D variable, which we're just gonna call hit. And all this is gonna do is it's gonna store whether or not the raycast is hitting something. And to check, we're gonna have to use physics 2D, which is just a library of things you can do with physics. The one specifically we're looking at here is a raycast. And now the raycast takes in a couple of arguments. You can see as I mouse over here that it's looking for an origin and a direction. And so it's going to go from our ledge detector dot position. So it'll look from that position. And then we just want to type in our raycast distance as that's how far it will look. Now there's one problem at the moment in that it doesn't actually know what direction it's looking. So let's just back up here and we're just going to go vector two dot down so that it knows it's looking downwards and the distance will be our raycast distance. Finally, we want it to know what it's actually looking for. So we'll put one more comma in here and now we're just gonna type in ground layer. All right, so this line will now store 
the information in this variable called hit of whether or not when it detects downward from our ledge detector, it actually hits the ground layer. And so now all we want to do is find out whether or not hit actually hit something on the ground layer. So we're going to do an if statement here. And we're just going to say if hit.collider, so the collider stored in our hit variable, is equal to null, then we want something to happen. Now null just means empty, so if it detects downward and it finds nothing in the ground layer, then this will be true and it'll run the logic inside. So at this point, let's just run a quick test so that we know whether or not this is working. So if we do not detect any ground, let's run a debug.log that just says ground not found. All right, so let's click on our robot and we'll have some new things to fill in here. First of all, it wants to know where the ledge detector is. So let's grab our ledge detection and put that in there. It wants to know what layer is ground, and for me, that's the tile map layer. Finally, it wants to know what distance. Let's just cast downward at a distance of, let's go 1.5 for now. And let's just give them a nice slow speed so we can see what's going on. All right, so if things are working correctly when we reach the ledge, we should get a console print off telling us, yes, ground not found. Excellent. So we know he's detecting the ground. Now we just need him to turn around when he can't find any. So at this point, there's really just two things left to do. We want to rotate our sprite, and we also want to change his direction. Let's start by rotating the sprite. I'm actually going to come down below fixed update here, and I'm just going to create a new void method, and we'll call this one rotate. And for this, we just want to talk to the transform component on your object. So keep in mind that for our robot, the transform is just this top component, and essentially what we just want to do is rotate him. And so as a demonstration here, you'll notice that if I go to the Y variable and I make that 180 degrees, it flips him. And it also flips the ledge detection so that it stays in the correct spot respective to him. And what we just want to do then is take that transform and we're just going to rotate it. We'll keep a zero on the X, we want 180 on the Y, and a zero, oops, zero on the Z. So now we just need to call this method whenever we reach a ledge. So let's get rid of that debug line and instead we can just call rotate whenever we reach that spot. Now this should work really nicely with ledges. You can even pause the game and, in theory, if you put them down in one of these crevices, it will also work. Now you might wonder why that's working, and essentially what's going on here is he's detecting downward when he gets to the corner, and because my ledge ends here, he's not finding one and turning around. If you have a different type of collider, this might not be working. And there's also one other potential situation that could cause trouble. Let's just pretend that we have a box in this layer. And now when I hit play, you'll notice that I get stuck against it because we're still detecting ground. So let's just add one little thing so that we can detect other objects as well. First off, I'm just going to take this random square I've created and let's give it a layer. So we'll just make a new layer and let's call this one maybe obstacle. And then make sure that our square is actually assigned to that layer and you might want to actually spell it correctly. Now what we could just do here is now we're going to make another type of layer mask layer. So let's make one called obstacle layer. And we're going to add a new raycast hit. So we can copy this one. The only thing we're going to do this time is let's call it hit obstacle. And it will go from the ledge detector. Sure, that sounds good. We're going to cast this time to the right. And instead of using raycast distance, let's do another one called obstacle distance, simply because I don't want to go a full 1.5 units to the right as he'd be turning around too soon. We'll make this a nice small number. So let's go with obstacle distance. And instead of looking for the ground layer, this time we're looking for the obstacle layer. So if the hit collider is null, meaning I don't see any ground, we'll rotate. But we're also going to add one other thing in here. We're going to put two lines, which just means or hit obstacle dot collider equals true. We'll also rotate. So now anytime we hit an obstacle, we should also rotate. All right, so now we just want to make sure that we have some obstacle distance. Because my ledge detection is actually in front of me, it's more or less where I want him detecting already. But if I put zero, it won't look at all. So I'll make this very small, like 0.1 maybe. Make sure we set our obstacle layer to my incorrectly spelled obstacle. And with that little change, we can detect obstacles as well as ledges. All right, I hope you found that one helpful. If you have, please take a second to like, subscribe, or leave a comment. All those things help a lot. Until next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.